what's up? I'm Ashley. Thank you for watching this video. And today, we're going to be talking about Cruel Summer, Season 2, Episode 10, Season Finale. And let's get started. The events that are about to unfold take place on or around January 1st, 2000 and August 2nd, 2000. So right away, we find out that Brent is the one who Luke paged that night to come get him from the dock. We see Luke saying, I didn't think you would show up. And Brent saying, this is my public service for the year. Trying to be funny, but he not. And that's all we get to see until later on in the show. So then we get to Brent's house and we see Steve coming down the stairs and he steps into a puddle of water. So he sees Brent. He's like, why is there water on the floor? And why are you soaking wet? But Brent is at the table over there crying, talking about, I have something to tell you. Then we flash to Steve running outside on the dock, looking at the water and calling out for Luke. He's like, Luke, Luke, what's that going to do? What is that going to do? Call 911. Brent should have been calling 911 instead of going to the house crying. And you should be calling 911 instead of running over there to the dock. What you going to do? Then we see Megan telling Isabella that she's untying Luke first thing in the morning. Isabella said, unbelievable. I feel like we let him off easy. Megan's like, you shot at him. Isabella said, I was just trying to scare him. I didn't mean for it to go off. She is a true psycho. But just like Megan said, she knew exactly what she was doing. She handled that gun like a pro. But Megan tells her that she's going back to the cabin at 8 a.m. Come or don't. Either way, she gonna be there. When they get to the cabin, they see that Luke isn't there. So they start looking for him outside. And of course, they didn't find him out there. So when they get home, Megan calls the hospital to see if anyone with Luke's description is there, but no one is there with Luke's description. She was also able to hack into the 911 call center and no one called in describing Luke. Megan is really worried about Luke, but Isabella not even worried. She's like, he's probably laying low somewhere. Okay, girl. She's more worried about destroying the tape that was filmed when they were in there torturing Luke at the cabin. But Isabella gets mad at Megan for Megan saying that this was a bad idea. Isabella says, he kissed me. He bragged about having sex with the both of us and he made that sex tape. All this is his fault. Megan tells Isabella that she isn't blameless and that she lied to her for six months about having sex with Luke. It wasn't even planning on telling her. Brent and Steve are at the dock looking out at the water like that's gonna do something as if that's gonna bring Luke back. Brent is worried about what's gonna happen and Steve is telling him to don't worry, he's gonna figure out a way to fix this. So even though it was an accident, he's over there trying to figure out how to save Brent. But Luke is the one who needs to be saved. But you'd rather keep him in that lake than to call 911, tell them it was an accident. What is going on? But I care about my reputation more than my son Luke. Steve went over to Megan's house and he asked Megan if she knew if Luke was mixed up into anything and she said no, not that she knew of. He asked her if she knew about the Coast Guard. She said yeah and then he admitted to Megan that him and Luke got into a fight about him going to the Coast Guard. He ends it with he hopes that Luke comes home soon. When he know good and damn well, Luke done fell into that lake. So after this conversation, Megan runs to go tell Isabella. And Isabella is so calm about this. She's like, okay, he's a missing person. But Megan's like, if Steve is asking questions, then that means that the sheriff could be next. Isabella told Megan that she should forge a letter from Luke saying that he ran away since she's been copying his handwriting since they were seven. Since his dad already thinks that... Luke ran away in the first place and Megan went right on along with that mess. But then we see Megan is putting up missing posters of Luke on the street and she just randomly just so happens to run into Jeff walking on the street with his video camera. Of course, he tells Megan that he's thinking about making a video and giving it to the local news just in case somebody watches it and sees Luke somewhere. Megan says, yeah, that's a good idea. And then he keeps on walking. Where is he going? Megan gets back home and she's sending Luke multiple messages begging him to let her know that he's okay. She's telling Isabella that the pills that they added to the drink was too much, especially that last one. They never should have added that one. Isabella tells her, we did this together. She is a true psycho. But Megan just cannot believe that she let Isabella talk her into this mess. So they start arguing and Isabella keeps on insisting that this is all Luke's fault. Isabella doesn't want Megan to keep defending Luke. 
she calls Megan an ungrateful little biatch and tells Megan that she made her life better. Megan tells Isabella that Luke was right when he told her that Isabella is only happy when she's miserable. And then before Megan walks off, she tells Isabella, I wish I never met you. Isabella was fuming. It looked like she was about to explode. So then summer arrives because that was just the winter. And we see Steve at the police station asking the sheriff why hasn't Megan and Isabella been arrested for Luke's murder. And the sheriff tells him because he doesn't have any hard evidence on them and that he hasn't received the camera footage from Ned's surveillance camera. And when he gets that, he hopes that there's evidence on there. But Steve doesn't like that. He looks worried because he knows that Brent could possibly be on that tape. Since he didn't like that, he ends the conversation with, you're trying to solve a case based on that lunatic? You're the lunatic. So Brent goes over to Megan's house talking about he wants to talk to a normal person, okay? And he brings up the fact that her and Isabella got brought in for questioning. Megan tells him that Sheriff Meyer thinks that her and Isabella killed Luke, but there's no evidence because they weren't the ones who killed him. But during this scene, did you guys notice this book on the counter? That's Kate Wallace from season one. She made a whole book about her experience. I like how they threw that in there. Then we find out that it was a plan for Isabella and Megan to blame each other that time at the sheriff's station for Luke's murder and they're surprised that somehow it worked. Then Megan suddenly remembers about the footage from Ned's place. She says that it won't only show her and Isabella but it would also show who came there later and killed Luke. Then genius Megan because if she was such a genius she wouldn't be following behind Isabella that much but she's able to hack into the police station's computer and watch the footage from that night and they see that Steve's car pulled up to the cabin. So with this new information, Megan and Isabella barge into Steve's office to confront him. I don't know what they thought was gonna happen. I don't know what they thought they was gonna do, but that's what they did. They marched right on up in there. He said, watch your tone. You better watch who you talking to, but you know they didn't care. I wouldn't either, but they let him know that they saw his car on Ned's security camera that night that Luke died. But Steve is claiming that he was at home, which he was. That was Brent pulling up. But we all already know that he would never throw Brent underneath the bus. But then Steve flips it on Isabella, telling her that his private investigator found out that her friends seem to have this habit of dying. And tells Megan that she better watch her back. And Brent overheard this whole conversation. When Megan and Isabella get back inside of the car, Isabella doesn't think that they should tell the sheriff about the footage since they're seen on it too. Then Isabella got all salty when she randomly tells Megan that the last few days feels like old times when they got along. But Megan tells her that she's describing this friendship as if it's this one in a lifetime magical thing when all she can see is the wreckage that came from it and Isabella is shook because she is for sure tripping. Meanwhile, Brent is in his dad's office having a meltdown thinking he's about to get caught. So Steve slaps him right across the face. He said what and told him he's feeling sorry for himself and that's not going to bring his brother back and that he's going to figure out how to get him out of this. Okay. Megan is at home on her computer reading this article about Luke and as she's reading this article, Someone on the radio announces that there's new evidence in Luke's case and that an arrest will be made soon. So once Megan hears this information, she goes to Isabella's hotel room to try to find her. But the maid tells Megan that Isabella left a while ago. When Megan leaves the hotel room as she's driving, she gets pulled over by the sheriff. He makes Megan follow him to the police station. She told him that she doesn't have a lawyer anymore, but he doesn't care. He said, I'm still following you anyway. You better be there. When they get to the station, the sheriff plays an edited video of Megan holding the gun the night Luke was murdered. Conveniently, Isabella can't be seen on the video at all. And Megan is then arrested for Luke's murder. I think when Isabella took that tape from Megan talking about she's going to get rid of it, she somehow edited the tape some kind of way so that you couldn't see her and only see Megan. I think she was setting Megan up. I think she was mad at Megan for saying that this wasn't even really a friendship and how Luke was right and all that. So I think that she did this on purpose to set her up. So they let Steve know that Megan was arrested. So now Brent is mad. He doesn't understand why his dad would let Megan go down for something like this. But Steve doesn't care as long as it wasn't Brent. Steve is telling Brent that he's ungrateful. And I'm just surprised that 
we're seeing Brent have a heart. We saw him in like, I don't know, maybe episode eight or seven or something, feeling guilty when Ned was brought up maybe being Luke's killer. And I thought that was suspicious. When I saw him acting like that, I said, yeah, it was Brent. I've been suspicious of Brent since forever, him and his daddy. But Brent is telling Steve that he needs to know if his mom was drunk and if that's what caused the accident. And if he was really blaming Luke for it when he already knew the truth. And you already know Steve was feeling some kind of way that Brent asked him this. He didn't want to answer it, but he told Brent he didn't want her to be remembered in that way because, you know, reputation matters. So after that conversation, Brent went to go visit Megan in jail and he confesses to her what happened that night. Then we go to this flashback to show us what happened. In the flashback, Brent is asking Luke what happened to his ear. Luke doesn't tell him, he just says that Megan and Isabella caught him in some lies. But Luke confesses to Brent everything that he's done, even admitting to when he played the sex tape at the Christmas party, telling him that he thought it was one of his, but then accidentally grabbed his. Then Luke brings up what happened to their mom, and Brent is surprised. He didn't know that their mom was drunk. That's why we saw him asking Steve what's his mom drunk and blaming it all on Luke. So they got into this argument. Brent was defending their mom. Brent is telling Luke that it's his fault and then pushes him in the water. And before Luke falls into the water, he hits his head on this pole. Brent thinks he's playing around, but when he realizes he's not, that's when Brent jumps into the water and tries to find Luke, but he can't find him. I didn't automatically think that he died right then and there, and I was right. But as Brent is confessing to Megan, the sheriff is overhearing this whole confession through the security cameras. That's when the sheriff goes in there and arrests Brent for Luke's murder. Then we see the police lights in front of Steve's house. They about to go in there and arrest him too. That's just what he get. I've been waiting for this. It's just what he deserves. So much for that knockoff Vegas strip mall he was building. So much for his reputation reputation because he's all over the news all up in articles he was just a nasty disgusting person at least we saw that brent had a heart but no he is just horrible so since megan is out of jail now she receives a message from ned he's letting her know that there's a job opening right now for her to be a coder so meg is out here a coder now we see that isabella took a flight she's on a plane on her way to ibiza when she's on the plane she meets this girl named michelle michelle better run michelle has a better chance jumping out of that plane than surviving Isabella. Isabella introduces herself as Lisa and I say yeah this girl is cool cool. She is crazy. She tells Michelle that she's gonna need a partner in crime when they get to Ibiza and offers to be her partner in crime and Michelle is taking her up on the offer. Oh girl R.I.P. Michelle. And the fact that she's telling this girl that Megan is her best friend and she's going to be visiting her in Ibiza once she gets done with school is just wild. She is wild. Very similar to how she was talking about Lisa and we already know she done killed Lisa. So we see Megan going to the dock saying her goodbyes to Luke and when she looks up she notices that there's a security camera pointing towards the dock. So Megan gets a hold of this footage and when she looks at this footage, she sure do get a surprise. Her and the rest of us see that Luke did actually make it to shore, just like I figured, but he was still partially in the water. Isabella walks up, she sees him partially in the water, but she's just standing over him, looking at him. She looked around to see if anyone was there, then that's when she placed her foot on Luke's head drowning him in the water. Then she pushed his lifeless body in the lake and then we see him floating away. And I was like, I knew it. I knew she was crazy. I didn't put nothing past her. When she shot that gun, she was shooting to kill. That's why it hit his ear. She was trying to get his head. She was trying to get his brain. Once Megan watches the tape, she's over there crying, not believing what she's seeing. She got her hand over her mouth. She just cannot Believe it, somebody go find Isabella, but they can't find her. She's always on the run. She goes to all these different countries, ruining people's lives, killing people. I figured Steve and Brent were involved. They sure were. I figured Isabella could be involved. I didn't put nothing past her. I didn't put nothing past Megan either, but I was leaning more towards Isabella. 
I thought Parker was going to have a bigger role in all of this, but her role in this whole season was just pointless. I thought the sheriff could be involved too, but nah. Even Jeff walking around with that camera, but nah. But y'all let me know what y'all thought about this season in the comments. Do y'all think it was better than season one? Let me know so we can talk about it. And if you haven't already and want to see more videos like this, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in my next one.